All right, welcome everyone to another episode of Caspio Labs, our weekly live stream dedicated to helping you improve how to use the Caspio platform. Uh, before I begin today's live stream, as always, if somebody can do me a quick favor using the chat window, let me know that you can hear me okay. And we can go ahead and begin today's live stream. So if you are able to hear me, let me know in the chat window and we will go ahead and begin. Hey, Mike, loud and clear. Okay, good to know. Also, thank you for the earlier comment. Uh, that's been noted. And I've done that in the past where I show the after and then we get into the before. So I'll definitely uh, keep that in mind for the next live stream. Northwest Custom Apparel, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope everyone is having a good day. Uh, today's content is all about how to customize a web form. And now this is a very heavy topic. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's no possible way for me to show you everything you, do, you can do on the web form side. So what I'm thinking we can do in the future is we can divvy up these se sessions so that we can have more topics on how to customize web forms to include some calculations, check boxes, and different types of field elements that we can include and maybe for different type of industries. If you guys have any suggestions, if you see a form out there, you'd like to see how to replicate that form in Caspio, just let us know in the chat window, send us a link, and we will go ahead and tackle that maybe for our next live stream. In the meantime, you should be able to see my screen. And let me do a quick preview of what a basic form looks like inside Caspio. Okay, just a single column uh, today we're going to learn how to customize this form and how I go about uh, figuring out if I want to have you know labels on top of my fields, labels as placeholders that are left, and different ways of how I optimize the form to make it look and feel like it's part of my website and also that it's functional. Now, in my example today, we're going to be, what we're going to be looking at is four different sections. This is going to be our first section, then we have our second section, third section, and then we have our fourth section. And each section, I'm going to apply different ways of how you can arrange the labels. For the top section, we're going to look at labels on the left of the fields. Middle section, we're going to put the labels as placeholders inside the fields. The third section, we're going to put the labels on top of the fields. And then for the final section, I'm going to show you how you can hide and show the entire section using the conditional rules in Caspio. Now, when it comes to putting labels, either to the left of the fields, on top of the fields, or as placeholders, my recommendation is to always keep all the labels uniform across the entire form. So if you start off with the labels on the left of the fields, I recommend that you keep the same type of layout throughout the form. It becomes really difficult to customize the look and feel of the form if you're going to mix and match labels on the left, on the top, in the middle of the fields. And even if you pay attention, if you're browsing the web and you come across a web form, Take a look, you'll see that most of the time, all of the labels are gonna be in one direction, meaning they're gonna be either on the left, on the top, or in the middle. Okay, so that's my recommendation. That is also a best practice when it comes to customizing web forms, okay? So let's see what, how we can customize the form that I have today. So the first thing that I always like to do to my web forms is include some kind of a heading and maybe a subheading. Okay, so let me go ahead and go to my form and edit my data page. Just bear with me for one second. One moment. I just forgot to open something up on my other monitor. Okay, so let's go. We're going to hit next. I'm going to select my table that's going to store all of that data. And let's call this a wire transfer form, okay, for a financial industry. For my style, I'm going to use green, English localization, and we'll continue. Now I have all of my fields already included in my submission form, so I'm just going to continue. And then here for my first section, like I said, I'm going to keep all the labels to the left of my fields. But to add my heading, I just need to add a HTML block and you can insert as many HTML blocks as you want to. Here at the top, if you guys have attended my prior live streams, I've told you that you can use the rich text editor here at the top to customize your heading, but if you are savvy with HTML CSS, you can disable that toolbar, come back to the standard tab, and now you can code in your own 
HTML and CSS, okay? Which is very useful because you can really customize the look and feel of the aesthetics and how you want that heading to appear. Now this is going to be a very simple one. I'm just gonna put H3 for heading three. Each of the headings in Caspio has been predefined inside the Styles tab. This one is going to be a little bit bigger with bold text. So if I put in here for my heading, we'll just say uh, beneficiary information. Let me just fix my text. And then we're gonna close the H3 tag. Okay, so that's my heading. If I hit preview, you're gonna see what that looks like. All right, I'm gonna keep the preview tab opened up. Let's go back to the data page and let's also add a subheading. Okay, so your subheading can also have a its own style if you'd like. You can add a simple span, oops, span tag if you want to customize the color of the text, the size of your text. But let me just see what it looks like with regular text, okay, without applying any styling whatsoever. So we're gonna say enter or modify the beneficiary information in the fields provided below. All right, it's just a simple text underneath my main heading. We're gonna hit preview. And you know what? I'm okay with that for now. A lot of times um, the form ends up being like a living document. Even when I embed the form into my website, I may have to make a few more modifications depending on how it looks with all of my other content on the website. Okay, so maybe my website text could be a different font family where I might have to change that in Caspio to match that same font family for my website to keep things uniform, okay? All right, so as I mentioned, I wanna keep all of my labels to the left. So I'm gonna keep the name field the way it is. Now let's go ahead and create the address fields. Now when it, when it comes to addresses, there's a specific preference that I have in terms of how I lay out my fields. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So for street one, there's my label name. I'm gonna rename this to be called address, okay? And inside my placeholder, inside that field, I'm going to put street one. Okay, so we're gonna hit preview now so you can see what that looks like. All right, now for that field, I'm actually going to expand that field so it's a little bit wider, right? Because the address could be a little bit longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that in the standard tab, change it from characters to maybe pixels, and we're gonna make that 400 pixels. Not 4,000, that's gonna to be too wide. <laughs> Let's hit preview. All right, so it's a little bit wider. That's enough space for me to put my address. Now for street two, I don't actually need to see this label here. I just wanna put that label as a placeholder inside my field. So be careful with that. When you go to street two, what I like to do is I like to go to the advanced tab. All right, and if you say label position, no label, what that's gonna to do to your field, it's going to shift that field entirely to the left. So not only does it remove the label itself, but it also removes the container that the label is in. And we don't want that. I actually want this field to line up with my field above. So I will say once again, label to the left. But one thing that I like to do here on the standard tab is simply just remove the text like that. Okay, so there's gonna be no text to the left of my field. And then in the advanced tab, I will simply add my placeholder street two. So let's see, after I adjust my width to be 400 pixels as well and hit preview. All right, now we have those two fields directly underneath, one underneath the other, street one and then street two. Okay, but you can see how it's cleaner. You don't actually need to see the label here on the left hand side. It's pretty clear that this is going to be street one, street two, and now we just need to adjust our city state and zip. And typically city state and zip is going to be on the same row in the same line, okay? So let's see how I can do that. So here's my city field. Once again, all I wanna do is remove my label here text to the left. So I'm just gonna go into the advanced tab, sorry, in the standard tab and remove the label city like that. And then inside the placeholder, I'm going to type that text in as city. So let me hit preview. And now you can see the city field. Okay, I remove that text. Now I wanna put my state field next to my city field. Okay, and to do that, highlight the city field, go into the advanced tab, and just simply say continue next element on the same line. Okay, which is going to put the state field on the same line as the city field. 
Okay, let's see what it looks like if I keep the label position on the left. So if I hit preview, you will see that label here to the left. We don't need to do that. Okay, we can actually put this label as a placeholder inside the field. Now, when we're talking about state fields, usually we want to create some kind of a dropdown. So when you select the state field in the standard tab, we have the option for a dropdown. Now, I don't have a lookup table inside this account to be able to link my states table to this dropdown to provide all of the options. So I'm just going to add some custom values. Select state as the first option. Make sure you delete the value. And then we're going to have maybe Texas, maybe uh, California, and where I wish I was, Hawaii. So now when I hit preview, you will be able to see select state. And that's clear enough that that becomes my label where I can select my state. Therefore, I don't need to have this label here to the left. So let me show you something here. Now if I delete the text for my state field, let's say I delete that label and I hit preview, look how much gap we have between my city field and my state field. Now it's actually okay to remove that container that contains that label because I'm trying to eliminate some of this gap so I can shift this field a little bit closer to my uh, city field. So what I can do now in the advanced tab is I can say no label you'll see how much closer it's going to get to my city field. Okay. Now let's line up the zip code field next to our state field. Okay, so we'll once again come back here. And for my state field, we're going to say continue next element on the same line, which is going to bring the postal code on the same line. Okay. Hopefully now you know for the postal code, we can say no label, because I'm trying to remove the label, and inside the placeholder, why don't we just call this zip code? Okay, let's hit preview. All right, but we're not done yet. When I build my forms, especially if I have a single column form and I'm mixing my fields on the same row, I always like to line up my fields to be the same uh, distance or same width. Okay, it looks a little bit cleaner. For example, city field, I don't need my field to be this long or this wide. Okay, even if you're looking at putting like Massachusetts or a different city in here, um, it's not going to be that long of a text, right? You can see how much text we can type in. I don't think any city will exceed that. So we can change the width of the city field, right, by going back to the standard tab and just saying pixels. Why don't we do maybe 150, half of that, and hit preview. Okay, that's good enough for me. The zip code field, at most you will need with the hyphen, is something like that. Okay, so you don't need this, all of this empty space inside that field. So we can remove that. Why don't we go ahead and just say for postal code, we'll say pixels, maybe uh, 110. I'll have to keep going back and forth a little bit uh, until I actually have the exact width. So let me hit preview. Okay. Now here's what I like to do. Instead of going back and forth and really getting down to a granular uh, way of customizing that pixel, you know, until you get the exact width. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous classes, you can hit F12 on the keyboard if you're using a PC. That's going to bring up the inspect tool where you can inspect all of your elements. So even for my city field, I'd like to make this a little bit um, more, less wide. So I will select that field and here to the right, you can edit this in real time. So why don't we make this maybe 140 pixels, okay? So the city field will be 140 pixels. And my zip code field is going to be, let's take a look, maybe 88 pixels. Again, you can make, if you're not happy with the width for the zip code field, maybe you can expand this field a little bit more, and then you can add pixels down here to your zip code field and your city field if you need more space. So 140 and 88. So I'll go back to Caspio, and then for my city field, I'll say 140. And for my postal code, we'll say 88. And then I'll hit preview. All right. So hopefully you find this to look clean. Okay, to me, this looks, look, this looks pretty clean. Uh, additional thing that I would do here is make my name field the same width as my address field. So I'll go back to that field, name, pixels, and I'll just say 400. Whoops, again, 4,000. <laughs> hit preview. And now you can see how everything is uh, evenly spaced 
and it looks pretty clean, at least in my opinion. The last thing I want to show you on this top section is how to use the checkbox to show and hide this field above. Okay, so if they want to opt in for an email notification, once they check the box, we will have this email field appear. Now, let me swap these two fields. I'm going to put the checkbox field above the email field. So let's come back here, and we'll just go one up. All right, now for my email notification, once again, I'm going to remove the label. I don't need to have that text appear. So when I hit preview, you will see a checkbox by itself. I want to be able to put that label after my checkbox. Okay, and to do that in Caspio, we're going to use display text. So whatever text you type in here is going to appear after the checkbox. So we're going to say send email notification, something like that. So now when you hit preview, you will see that text appear after the checkbox. Once again, remember, if you guys go to the advanced tab and you say no label, you will shift that checkbox all the way to the left. But I'm trying to line up all of my fields to be even, so we're going to go ahead and say label to the left. Even though I removed the text, you know, it's still pushing that field to the right because it's not removing the actual container. Now, how do I hide the field below? Before I hide the field, let me apply the same aesthetics as what I have for my name field. Okay? So let's do that. So let's come back here to the email field. All right? And we're going to make the field in pixels 400. Okay? Uh, let me take a look at my question here. So will this fixed width work in responsive for mobile devices if we have fixed width for city, state, and zip? It's all going to put... So that's a good question. So let's see what happens because I already have responsive enabled. That's a good question, okay? You can see that it automatically puts them all uh, the same width and it's just going to cascade the fields one underneath the other. So they're not going to be in the same row. Usually for a mobile device, you want the fields to be on top of each other because it's easier to read, because you're working with so little space on the mobile device, okay? So it's automatically going to adjust for the mobile screen. And then for my next question that I have, should the name be first and last name fields? Yes, it's completely up to you how you want to collect the names, okay? So you could have first and last name by itself, or you could have the name by itself. Yeah, so don't worry. When it comes to naming, uh, really it just comes down to your preference and how you want to collect the names. But in most cases, you will either say either see name or first and last name. Yeah, I just chose to have the name by itself, just for simplicity. Okay, but good question. All right, so let me apply some aesthetics to my email field. So we already have the pixels to be 400. In fact, why don't we actually just have a placeholder email and we'll just say, uh, label position on the left, and in the standard tab, we're going to remove the label. Just remove the text. Hit preview. I, I like that. That's pretty clean, at least in my opinion. Okay, now I need to hide that field until this checkbox is checked. Okay, so we're going to use the rules tab. Okay, we're going to add a new rule. And the criteria is going to be set on that checkbox field. So email notification. So if the email notification is not checked, okay, I want to hide the email field, which means the opposite. If it's checked, it's going to make that email field show up. Okay, you can see how it's a hidden field until you check the box, and then the email field will show up. So that's our top section. Okay. When I build my forms, this is how I like to treat my address fields. There's so many different ways. A lot of it just comes down to your own preference. You'll see in a different section down below here how I actually put the labels on top of the fields. You can do that as well. Or inside the fields completely if you'd like to. You know, you could remove these labels altogether if you put the name field as a placeholder here. And you can also put the address street 1, address street 2 as your placeholder text. So that way you shift these fields all the way to the left, and that's going to give you a lot more real estate to work with on your website if you're embedding this form. So you can make the form a bit more compact, okay? 
All right, let me take a look. Some forms require you to type your email address two times to confirm if it's correct email address. Can you do that in Caspio? Absolutely. Yeah, you can. So we do have the option for the email field. There's my email field. Okay. Um, if you choose the email special element from this dropdown to validate the email, it's going to look for the at symbol and the period afterwards. Okay. Make sure it's correct format. You can do things like repeat for confirmation. And then you can just say confirm email. Usually you will see this on the registration form, okay, where you're not hiding this email field. Okay, if I'm not hiding that email field, I will probably have this, and I'll only have this on the registration form, not on the form that I'm creating today. But let's see, let's just see what that looks like. Okay, send email, and you can do confirm email. I could put this as a placeholder inside that field, so let's just do that in the advanced tab. Placeholder, confirm email. Don't need email twice. And then let me see if I can actually remove the confirm email label that's on the left. I don't think that I can. I'll have to I'll have to explore that a little bit more because it still has the label here. Oh, sorry, I put the confirm email on the very first field. I'm not supposed to do that. So this is email, and this here is confirm email. Okay, so let's hit preview. So there's email, there's confirm email. So now it's going to look that the email is the same exact email twice. Okay. Again, I wouldn't do that on a form like this. I would only do that if I'm building a registration form where people are creating their password in their email. Okay, because it's helpful. Because somebody can put the wrong email in there and you want to check for validation. Okay. Uh, good question there. No need for that today. So we're going to remove that repeat for confirmation. Okay. All right, let's add our next section, and we're going to separate the next section using an HTML block. I'm going to create another heading. So again, I like to disable my toolbar, and I'm going to create a heading three here, very simple. And let's call the next section Beneficiary Financial Information. Oh, sorry, Institution. All right, so H3. And then just some text underneath that. We can just say Enter or Modify. The beneficiary financial institution. All right, and I'm oh, missing an I there. Institution and the fields provided below. All right, let's hit preview. Okay, so that's my next section that I'm working on. If you ever get to the point where you tell, where you see something like this, where the subheading is very close to your fields, um, you can actually add a very simple diff tag to your subheading to add some more space between the heading and the fields. So if you go back to the first HTML block, very simple way of treating that is by adding a simple diff tag, okay, and then some style, and then margin. For now, I'm just gonna add my pixel width, and let's close the div tag. All right, so something simple like this, where margin controls the top pixel. So this is padding above the text, to the right of the text, below the text, and to the left. I want to add some spacing underneath my text. So let's say maybe 15 pixels, and I hit preview. That's perfect. That's plenty of space underneath that subheading to separate a little bit of, um, to create a little bit of a gap. Okay, so now you can apply the same thing. If you like it up here, you can also apply the same thing to the subheading underneath. So all you need to do is just copy the first portion, go to the HTML block, paste that here, and just close your div tag to repeat the same spacing. Preview, and there's that spacing. Now you can work on these fields. And for this section, as I mentioned, let's go ahead and put all of the labels inside the fields as placeholders. Okay. So we can see what that looks like. So to account, so again, we're going to go ahead and for this section, we're going to say no label because I'm going to shift all of my fields to the left, OK? Since I'm putting all of my labels inside as placeholders. So to account, you specify or designate what account you want to um, submit the, um, the funds. And we're going to go ahead and hit preview now just to see what that looks like. 
There it is. Now for account type, you could decide to put all of your fields underneath the other fields, or you can put them in a new column if you'd like to put them side by side. And for this one, let's go ahead and do that. So account type, all right, in the standard tab, we're gonna create a dropdown. And I'm gonna use custom values for now. So account type, maybe checking, maybe savings, and then add one more, select delete the value and move that option to the very top because that's gonna be my very first option in the dropdown. Now, when I do that, let me go back to my account field in the advanced tab and say continue next element on the same line. I wanna be able to put that field on the same line as that field. Okay, so come back to this one. And then all you need to do is just say label position, no label, hit preview. And now you have both of those two fields side by side. Now this is not enough information for me just to say select. I don't know what that means. So what I'll typically do here is I'll go back to that drop down, And in my first option here, I'll say select account type. Now it's a little bit more clear what that, labels, what that label means at least. Okay. All right, routing number, always very important. So let's put that information inside the field as well. So we'll copy that text. And in the advanced tab, we'll paste that here in this placeholder and just say no label. Preview. Okay. All right, let's have the name of the institution. So we'll put that next to our routing number. All right, so so again, we'll say continue next element of the same line. Name of the institution. We'll just copy the label. Go to the advanced tab. We'll just reverse this. Institution name. All right. And then we'll say no label. And hit preview. So you can see how it's coming together. Now imagine if we had the same type of uh, style applied to the fields above. All of these fields will be pushed to the left. And you would have a lot more space to work with here on the right-hand side because all of your fields are now left aligned. And there is no, there's no label here to the left. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream, when you're building your forms, don't try to mix and match your fields like this. It just becomes really difficult to edit the form. If I start my form this way, I will apply the same style to the rest of my form. Okay? All right. Let's continue for Street Institute. Oh, so this is the address field. Okay, let's see how we can treat this. So for the address field, uh, once again, in the placeholder, address 1, I will say no label. Okay, for address 2, I'll keep that underneath. So I'll keep them on top of each other. Okay, so for this one, we'll say address 2, no label. Let me say preview. All right, there it is. Now, because I like to have everything be even width, what I would do is expand these both of these two fields so they're all the way across, so they're evenly aligned with the institution name. And if I want to later on, I can also make this a little bit wider as well, so it even, it's evenly aligned. So let's add a width here in pixels for both the address fields. So address one, standard tab, pixels, I don't know, maybe uh, 400, and we'll edit that later on, 400. Okay, so it's almost there. Now you can hit F12 on the keyboard, inspect the element, click inside that field, and just make your adjustment in real time here, very slightly. All right, I think it's at 426. So I can come back here and just say 426. 426, and hit preview. Excellent. Now, if you're as meticulous as I am, <laughs> if this bugs you, I would definitely make this field a little bit wider as well. Okay, so let me come over here and just say for the account type, uh, pixels, and I think maybe 188. I could be off. And I'm very close. So just click inside the field and make a few adjustments here. So it looks to be 199, just one shy of 200. One pixels, one pixel. Okay. Hopefully this is uh, very helpful for you guys to be able to see how I go about building my forms and customizing them. It's just knowing how to tap back and forth in the data page wizard, going from the standard tab to the advanced tab, 
and then knowing when to disable the label and when to just remove the text depending on the configuration that you want to make. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at my question here. I saw Caspio has an add-on purchase that verifies the address to a national address database. Would that add an option to apply to a form like this? Um, you know, I'm not familiar with that option. I should be familiar with that, but if you find it somewhere, do me a favor, just send me an email. I'll take a look at that for you offline. Okay, that's a good question. I'll have to look into that offline just to see what that's all about. Um, to verify if it's in a national database. Um, so it's it's a... Um, um, yeah, I, I know what you, I've seen that on the submission forms before where you put in the zip code and it pulls up the address so it's verified. That's the address that exists in the national database. Do you want to use this address as your actual address or do you want to continue with the one that you added? I know what you mean. I haven't seen that option. Yeah, address verification. Uh, send me an email. I'll take a look at it offline or you can contact our support team and they'll definitely, uh, they'll definitely um, be able to provide an answer for that. Are these settings responsive? Example, different form, uh, different form factors like phone, tablet, etc. Yeah, so everything is responsive, right? By default, everything is responsive. So even if I were to uh, change the width of my form, you will see how everything is going to automatically adjust for every single device type, even if you're on a tablet or mobile. Now, for mobile, as I said before, uh, usually the best behavior is to expand all the fields all the way across because the mobile device has such a narrow width that it's helpful to be able to see fields automatically stretch all the way across. Okay. Good question there. But on the PC or on the computer because you have a wider monitor, well, you can customize it however, however much you want. All right, let's continue the rest of the fields. We have city, state, and zip code here before we move on to the next section. So let's come back here and find our city, state, and zip. And I'll do this very quickly for you guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say city, no label. Continue next element on the same line, which is the state. There's my state field. That always needs to be a drop down. And we're gonna say select state, same as before. And we're going to add some custom values here. So Hawaii, once again. And let's go with Texas, maybe Nevada, and maybe New York. All right. So that is my dropdown for my state field. And then what we're going to say under the advanced tab, we're going to say no label and continue next element on the same line, which is the zip code field. So we'll say zip code. And then we'll say no label. And we don't need to continue next element on the same line because this section is going to be its own section. So let's hit preview. And just like the same treatment that we applied here in these uh, three fields, we can apply the same thing down below. Okay. So hopefully now you know that we can measure that in pixels. So if you change the field width, it's very easy to do that. City in the standard tab, just change from characters to pixels. And maybe you can say 188. Your state field can be, I don't know, maybe 100. And your zip code field can be 100 as well. And just continue making additional modifications until all of the fields line up with the field above. All right, let's create the new section now where I show you how to put the labels on top of the fields. All right, so once again, we're going to add an HTML block. All right, I'm going to disable my toolbar and add a very simple heading three. And we're going to call this section payment information. Close the heading. And underneath that again, let's have some text. So we'll say enter the payment information for this recipient uh, in the fields provided below. All right, and again, if you want that same spacing, just go back to the previous HTML block, grab your diff, diff code, copy it, come back, paste, and close the diff tag. Now, I always like to preview 
myself. That's just my own preference. I like to hit preview. Every time I make a subtle change to my form, um, I have a tendency to hit preview just so I can see that everything is lining up correctly and it's looking nice uh, before I make any other modifications to my fields. All right, so pay from. Let's go ahead and do that next. So we're going to come back here and go to that field. Now, as I said, we're going to put all the labels on top of the fields. Okay, so this is going to be pay from. And in the advanced tab, I'm going to put the label position on top of my field. And we can also create this to be a drop dropdown uh, where we say select, maybe account, delete the value. And we're going to pay from either our checking account or maybe our savings account where we pull the funds to pay somebody. All right, so let's hit preview. Again, I always like to hit preview just to see what it looks like. There's my label on top of my field. The from account can maybe line up next to my pay from account. Okay. Uh, let me see if I did this correctly. Yeah, sorry, this is actually going to be the name. So if I'm paying from a specific company, and this is going to be either from the checking account or the savings account. So I mixed my two fields up. So we're going to say maybe pay from can say, uh, I don't know, Hastings Company, something like that. And this can say Jordan's Company, I don't know, something random like that. So which company you're paying from and then the from account is going to be either checking or saving. So label, I'm going to put some space there. Advanced tab, label position on top. I want to put this field in the same row as my pay from, so I'm going to come back here and say continue next element on the same line. All right, and then for my standard, we're going to create this to be a drop down, and we're going to say select account, delete the value, and then we're simply going to say checking and savings. All right, so hopefully that looks good. Let me hit preview. Okay, not bad. Again, remember, you can always make your fields wider if you need to. Okay, so now let's move on to payment date. And maybe you want to put the payment date on the same row as the fields, the previous two fields. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at my question here. When should you finish, press finish as you are working on the form to save it? All the current work will be lost if you exit at your browser. Excellent, excellent question. Thank you for reminding me of that, actually. So... You know, sometimes when I'm editing my fields, I'll actually forget to hit finish often. Because let's just say you made all of these modifications, you've hit preview, all that we've done so far would be lost if I hit cancel, if I lost internet connection. So I forgot to mention this, but best practice is when you make, when you felt like you made a lot of changes to your form, okay, when it feels like it's the right time to do so, and you don't want to lose all of your prior work, Okay, uh, always hit finish to save your changes. Yeah, I learned that the hard way as well. That's a good comment. I learned that the hard way too a long time ago. A uh, number of different times. Okay, not just once. And let me tell you, it's not a pleasant feeling. Especially also on the table side too. Uh, a lot of times that has happened to me on the table level where I put all of my data types um, and I thought that I saved my table, but then I go back to data pages, I come back no table, and now I have to rebuild the table from scratch. Not a pleasant feeling. So now everything has been saved. Um, once you make your first uh, save, actually, we do have the ability to do revisions history, so you can go back to your prior save. Okay, so this is my first save. And now whatever change I make, even if I lose all of my prior work that I made, I can always revert back to that revision to take me back to what my changes were at that point. Okay. So for example, Let's say you edit the form, and let's say you make just a small change here. Let's say for the name field, we add a placeholder. It must be a legal name, right? So I'm going to hit preview just so you can see what that looks like inside the placeholder. If I save my change now, and I realize I didn't really want to make that change, I can hit revisions history, and I can revert back to my save that I had before that. So think of it like an undo button in Word. You can undo and go back to the previous save. Okay. Now I feel better than Ned lost his work. Yes, and it still happens to this day. You know, it's 
sadly, you know, uh, no matter how many years you've spent building these applications in Caspio, um, if you don't use it, you lose it. I don't spend nearly as much time inside a platform as I used to. Um, yeah, the re revisions definitely helps. Definitely, definitely helps if you have that feature enabled on your account. But let's go ahead and continue. We still have a little bit more content to get through, and then we'll be done with today's live stream. So where were we? So payment front, let me hit preview just to see what it looks like. All right, let's put the payment date on the same row as the other two fields. So let's go to from account. We'll say the advanced tab, continue next element on the same line. I want this to be on the same line. And then payment date, let me go ahead and put some spacing here. We'll put the label on top. And let's hit preview. Okay, not bad. Looks okay. All right, for the amount field, uh, let's put that, well, you can continue putting, if, if you choose to decide this, you can continue putting additional fields in the same row, whatever makes sense, especially when you're embedding, embedding the form into your website. Uh, if on that, in that container you have additional space that you're working with on your website, you could add that field on the same row as the payment date. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm just going to leave it by itself. So, amount. Actually, you know, in this case, I think it's, it's better to put the amount field on the same row because description is going to be by itself. Okay, I think that's best. So let's put the amount field on the same row. So payment date, continue next element on the same line, amount, label on top, and hit preview. All right, not bad. You can also add a default value here if you'd like as a placeholder. So you could dress that up a little bit by adding a dollar sign if you'd like, just for the aesthetics to make it look nice, or a pound sign if you're in UK localization, you can do that. Description field. Now for description, let's see what we can do with that. Again, I'm going to put the label on top. All right. And then for my standard tab, we're going to turn this into a text area. And let me just see what it looks like initially. Not bad. It looks okay. Actually, how I would end up completing this form is I would put both of these two fields in its own row. I think that's going to make it look the cleanest because I don't want to make my description field all the way this, this wide, you know, that's just too big. So let me go ahead and fix this. Let me put these two fields underneath my pay from and from account. So let's go to this field from account. And we'll just say, don't continue next element on the same line and hit preview. Now both of those two fields are going to be underneath. And now I can, I can change the width of my description so it's even with the fields above. And I can also change the width of both of these two fields so everything lines up correctly. And hopefully now you know how to do that. I usually tend to use pixels for that. All right. And let us move on to the last topic, um, which is how to hide the entire section on the submission form. Okay, so we're going to introduce one more HTML block. I'm just going to copy the text from one up above. Copy that. And then let us go here, add an HTML block, disable the HTML editor, paste our code, and then we're going to rename this to read something else. So we're going to go intermediary financial institution. All right, and for my text, it's probably going to keep enter modify. Now, hold on, let's rename this to read something else. So let's call this intermediary. I already had all of this text on my other monitor, so we're just going to copy that. In fact, I could just copy and paste, but I'm going to type it out. Enter the information below. All right, good enough. So let's hit preview. And this is going to become my very last section. So one thing that I'll do right away, okay, is I'll fix this checkbox. So let's do that. All right. So let's come over here and delete this text and put that after our display text. So after the checkbox, use intermediary institution. Okay. 
And then I'll also say no label. I want to be able to push that checkbox all the way to the left. Hit preview. Okay, there it is. Now what I'll do before I actually make any adjustments to my fields, uh, I could do that if I wanted to, but let me show you how you can hide this entire section. Okay, all you have to do is insert a section. And now you can hide this entire section too based on the behavior that has on the checkbox. So rule number two, let's find that checkbox. Okay, there it is. If it's not checked, I want to hide section two. All right, so let's hit preview. Notice how the entire section is hidden. Now when I check the box, you can see all of those fields. So not only can you hide a single field by itself, you can also hide the entire section. Okay. I'm curious which style you guys like the most. Do you like having labels on the left of the fields? Do you like them inside the fields? Or do you like them on top of the fields? So again, as I mentioned at the beginning of today's live stream, if I'm applying labels to the left of my fields, I'll do the same thing to the rest of my form. But I have built my forms to have the fields on top of the labels, on top of the fields, inside, and to the top. Okay? I've done forms with labels in every single direction. So if you look at some of my app examples that I usually show, maybe the, um, well, here's the wire transfer form that I'm kind of building in today's class, right? So you can see how the labels are on the left. And you can see how I continue using the labels on the left of my fields. All right, but in today's live stream, I'm showing you how to mix and match these labels depending on your preference, whichever way you like to position the labels. Okay, this is a direct link from Caspio. It's not embedded into any kind of a website, so it's just a form by itself. But just keep in mind that you can also have a background image behind the form. You can center the form. You can put a logo. Yeah, I'll show you how I did that very quickly. So if I go to Google and I look for maybe wire transfer logo, and, and there it is. Actually, it's the very first one. How funny. So let's grab that image address, and then let's go back to our account in the Elements tab. Here, we'll just put a very simple image source, image source tag, paste the link to where that image is hosted, and then just put maybe width to be, I don't know, maybe 200 pixels, and then we'll close the image tag. Hit Preview. Okay, there's your logo above the form. And you can continue changing the width according to your own preference. All right, so that's it as far as our content today. I'm not going to go through each one of these fields to show you how to modify them. Hopefully now, based on what you've seen before here, in these other sections, you know how to do that. You can always watch this video at a later time. It is going to be available publicly on our YouTube channel. If you go to our live streams, you're going to be able to find this video, and then you can, um, you know, watch at your own pace if you need to relearn some of the things that we covered today. Okay. For those of you who keep coming back to these live streams, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Uh, I have taken in some feedback from earlier today to show you guys what the form is going to look like or something that we built in these live streams, what it's going to look like. Um, at the very beginning of our live stream, I'll show you what we're building so that you guys know exactly what we plan on developing. And then in our live stream, I'll show you how to get to that point. Okay. So again, thank you guys so much for attending the live stream today. I hope that you enjoyed the, the content. Um, if you guys have something specific that you would like to see on the form, or let's say there's a form out there that you want to be able to recreate. I always like a good challenge, so if you guys find a very fancy form, something that looks nice, send that over to our uh, chat here, okay, in the future live streams. We'll take note of that, and we will try our best to recreate the form. Now, I'm always blunt about this when I say customization on the forms in Caspio. I usually like to say there is no form out there that we cannot recreate. Just because we give you access to the CSS and HTML to modify each of the elements. So again, I always like a good challenge. So if you guys find something that you like to see, certain functionality, something that's a little bit more dynamic, let us know in these live streams. We're going to try our best to recreate that in, in these sessions. Uh, let's take a look. Hey, Peter. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback, Peter. Come back to these sessions. All, these sessions are really dedicated to help you improve 
the look and feel. We're going to talk about tips and tricks and how to modify the aesthetics and also functionality of the apps. Uh, I definitely have plans to do triggers as well. Uh, we're going to do different triggers uh, to automate different procedures in the back end. So those are also planned. Uh, I know our next live stream is, all be, is going to be all about database design. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple of different use cases. And I'm going to show you how I go about building my tables. Okay, and how I connect my tables using the relationship screen. And we're going to look at a few different use cases, maybe a CRM, maybe project management app, and how I tie all of my tables using primary keys and foreign keys. Because tables, hopefully everyone knows by now, tables are the most important aspect of building an application in Caspio. Okay? You have to have the right foundation in place so it's easy to expand upon it at a later time. All right, let's take a look at these questions that might come inside the chat. So let's take a look. I think there was a good one here from Peter. Any chance to have a webinar on everything about login, logout, keeping signed in? Yeah, we can definitely do one session on that. So let me take note of that. Uh, give me a second. I have my uh, Word document opened up here. Let me shift this to the right. All right. Login, logout. Okay, what, was, what else was there? Keeping signed in, keeping signed in, et cetera. Okay, so I'm thinking everything that pertains to our advanced settings in the authentications object where we can have when a user clicks on the logout link, uh, we take him back maybe to our home page, or we have if the user is logged out for about 15 minutes, uh, automatically log them out. So yeah, we can definitely do one session on authentication. Maybe we even get as far as doing SAML. Maybe you guys would like to see how to connect to an IDP to have users log in uh, using SAML. Also very helpful if your company already has credentials stored inside that IDP like Okta or Microsoft Active Directory or a different type of IDP. All right, let's see what other topic suggestions we have. Pivot tables, how user can select records in a table and take it further to the next view. Okay, that's a good one. Pivot table, maybe we can have one whole entire live stream dedicated to pivot tables because I know there are a lot of options in pivot tables uh, when it comes to aggregation and calculating data and also to be able to do a drill down. So if you're looking at a pivot table, for example, uh, let's see one of my examples that I have. So down here, here's a pivot table. Well, not a, it's not a simple pivot table. Uh, we have the names here on the left-hand side of the sales reps. And if I click on each cell, we can drill in to see more options or the breakdown of all the sales for Alejandra for the month of January. Uh, you can do a grand total here on the right-hand side, and you can also do a grand total here on the bottom to calculate every single column and every single row. Now, if you wish to expand upon that, I think that came from Peter. Peter, if you wish to expand upon this topic, let me just copy your entire question here so I can copy and paste that in my Word document here on the right side. Pivot table, so users can select records in a table and take it further to the next view. Okay, so I'll keep a note of that. These are all, by the way, these are all great suggestions. Thank you, guys. I would like to see a product order form where I can add line items of a product. Okay, so I think you're referring to something that looks like this, where you select your items, you can select the quantity here, and then you can continue adding line items. Now, one thing to keep an eye on for here is um, we really are trying to stay away from doing too much customization using JavaScript. There's a lot of, not a lot of JavaScript, there's a fair amount of JavaScript on this form. Um, I don't typically like to code the JavaScript in the live sessions. I made that mistake in our previous session because uh, it didn't end up working correctly, so I had to copy what I had done before and paste it into my live example in order to, for it to work correctly. Um, just because JavaScript is a little bit more delicate, you really have to pay attention to capitalization, commas, and a different, um, different elements that you have to put into the script. However, we do have this available as an app extension. Uh, if anybody wants to see how I did this, I'm happy to share this form with you guys. Just send me an email, okay? Yeah, just send me an email. I'm going to put my email in the chat window one more time. 
All right, no worries. Here it is. Send me an email. I'm actually going to send you the form. And then all you need to do is import the form into your account. And from there, you can try to make sense of it yourself if you want to drill into JS and see how I did this. Okay, but I, I'm trying to stay away from talking about JavaScript in these sessions. I think I'll go as far as a very simple script and then definitely tons of HTML and CSS because that's easier. But JavaScript is a little bit more technical and we are trying to promote no code to very low code um, type information. Okay. All right, let me see uh, what other questions we have. I'd like to see a product. Okay, we did that one. You briefly showed us a product order form a few weeks ago. Okay, that's that one. How about Google Map API key? Okay, that's also a good one, Bard. Let me go ahead and write that down here. Google Maps. Maybe we can do an entire live stream on Google Maps. That would be a very helpful one too. Because I know with Google Maps, I haven't done it in a, in a while, but you have to get the API from Google and then plug that into our code. And then what's nice about the Google Maps is that you can change the pins based on maybe a field that you have in your table, which is pretty cool, right? So if you're displaying restaurants, you can have pins for restaurants. If you're displaying hospitals, you can have a different pin entirely. And then using the search form, you can filter what information you want to display on the map. So there are a lot of useful map capabilities uh, built in to our map wizard that we have. So that's a great topic. Uh, I think we might be able to bring that in one of the future uh, live streams. Thank you, Barb. Uh, let me take a look. How do we add? Okay, we did that one. Just adding to my pivot table suggestion. Let me go ahead and copy all of that text. Just hang on for one second. I'm going to copy that and add that to your previous con. Just adding to my pivot table suggestion. Exactly drill down, but if possible, also selecting a record or more by a checkbox in the table row, like a bulk edit option. Okay. That might actually require some customization. So I'll have to spend a little bit more time offline to look into that and see how we can go about doing something like that. Okay, it's a good one though. I like that. I've never done it, so I need to investigate a little bit offline. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, follow up in the email. If you want to give me a little bit more um, content or more context around that question, definitely send me an email. And um, yeah, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll even let you know uh, when we plan on talking about pivot tables, just to keep you in the loop. All right. Let me know if you have any more questions. This is exciting. I'm happy to see so many of you come back to these live streams. I'm happy that you guys are enjoying them. Um, and definitely look forward to more content um, in the future live streams. So thank you guys. Hopefully you guys are all staying safe out there. I know it's madness that we live in today's world and what's happening around the globe. Uh, on a personal note, I'm hoping that, you know, that will subside and we can go and return back to our normal, normal lives, you know, pre-2020 days. All right. Thank you guys so much. I will go ahead and end the live stream now. Um, I'm going to keep the chat open just to see if there are any more comments and feedback coming in. Uh, but I will close my video now and answer any questions that come into the chat. Thanks, Mike. So thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye.